Hey, I'm Lina, and in this video I'll be unboxing my new kiln. I will also be sharing useful information and additional accessories I purchased to kickstart firings later on in the video. To get the kiln through a standard doorway, we had to unpack a large portion of it outside. I recommend doing this as removing the pressed wood pallet makes the already hefty kiln light to carry. Just a health and safety note. Point the knife away from yourself when cutting any packaging to prevent any accidents. You will see in a minute that whenever I cut something towards myself, I tend to step back or to the side and not add too much pressure whilst cutting as this minimizes the risk of me hurting myself. When cutting the tape, I also made sure to be careful with the amount of pressure I had applied so I did not cut into the next layer of what was in the box when it suddenly gives. And before doing anything else, don't forget to put the knife down. I had to keep reminding myself. As you can see from the title of this video, inside the giant box we have a Nabotherm 45, all packaged up nice and safe by Nabotherm and kept in stock at Hot Clays. I have read a lot of good reviews about Nabotherm and their team, so I felt confident sourcing the kiln from Hot Clays. Here I am just excitedly freeing her from the tape, cling film and foam cake prison. If you don't enjoy insects, just skip to the timestamp down here. Okay, so during the unboxing, we discovered that in transit, the kiln had acquired a little stowaway. We carefully removed this companion from the pallet and decided to examine it to figure out its origins and needs. In moments like this, I like to think with what Gordon White from RuneSoup calls omen logic. To briefly explain, omen logic states that as humans, we can read the world through our imagination and intuition to discover personal meaning, much like we would a tarot deck. By noticing signs and synchronicities, we can recognize opportunities for the arrival of deeper meaning and celebrate the relevance that helps guide our lives. This falls under what I would call magic, which I understand to be the creative ability to discover and enchant life with meaning. So we decided to look a little into it. After googling and looking into this insect, we were sure that it was a silverfish, a small wingless insect in the order of Zygentoma. The name Zygentoma is derived from Greek, in context meaning yoke or bridge. This felt immediately akin to my art practice. I see my kiln as a nucleus for new beginnings, like an egg or a womb for the sculpture's genesis and transformation. The kiln also acts as a bridge between worlds and states of matter, from soft to the hard, the wet to dry, from cold to hot, then back again. So from this point onward, I'll refer to my kiln as Zygentoma, thanks to my little silver messenger. If my kiln ever happens to play up, fingers crossed it doesn't, I'll briefly call it Firebrat, which is a relation of the silverfish who likes to live in hotter climates. I had planned to call my kiln Calcifer after the fire demon in Howl's moving castle, but the universe had different plans for her. I've recently given up my studio to work from home, partly to have more access to my work and to be able to flex my schedule. Before the first firing, I laid down a foundation of breeze blocks for safety to ensure the wooden floor was insulated against the kiln's ambient heat. As the 45 litre kiln is quite compact, it was perfect for my little workplace. First off, I carefully cut the tape and unwrapped the B400 controller. I chose this controller for its large screen, the late start time and an easy to navigate interface. It even comes with preset programs such as first firing and bisque firing, which makes it that much easier for a novice like myself. I can also store and alter five programs with four segments each. You can choose to upgrade to a different controller such as the C440 if you need more programs and more precise control over segments, but at some extra cost. I was happy to go with the B400 as it's versatile enough for the time being and because I don't plan to alter the segments too much to work with materials such as glass or crystalline glazes just yet. Just undoing the latch on the side and lifting the lid, which is easy to do due to the gas damper on the back. 
Inside the kiln, we have three wrapped up kiln shelves. I have ordered the kiln with a shelf kit, which includes shelves and props. As you can see, because of the brickwork, there is plenty of space inside. I can imagine that loading and unloading of ceramics will be made easier with the recessed thermocouple and elements out of the way too. This kiln has two sets of elements divided by four channels. Just be gentle when closing the lid, as at about 15 centimeters away from the lip, the gas dampers ease off, which means that if you let go too early, it could slam shut and potentially crack the brick. Now onto the additional components. Let's see what else the kiln has arrived with. This kiln comes with EU and UK standard domestic plugs, which means the kiln can plug straight into the main power supply, which was a big plus for me and my home studio. The side metallic pipe and caster wheels, which can be attached to the kiln's feet, an allen key, three squares of shelving for the props placed on the bottom of the kiln, six 50mm props and six 100mm props. Now on to a little haul of additional and useful supplies I ordered online in preparation for the first few firings, as well as a quick look at the paperwork that came with the kiln. Here I am just clipping my hair up because we're getting into some serious business, the instructions. I found both of these clear, tangible and extremely useful, especially in quenching my fears as a novice. The control instructions manual covers the display interface and how to alter the programs on your computer. The operating instructions for the kiln was my favourite, as the accompanying illustrations made it easier to understand and read. Ok, so on to a few of the supplies. A coarse diamond hand pad to grind down and sand down any glazes that may end up leaking or sticking onto the kiln shelves in the future. I'll also eventually get a masonry chisel for this purpose. A set of free hake brushes, the fine and soft bristles on this make it easier to evenly paint glazes onto your ceramics. Heat resistant gauntlets, mostly for unloading and handling freshly baked ceramics. The second box has a few double pointed stilts to raise glazed pots from the kiln furniture. You can get these in a range of sizes. A metallic exhaust pipe, so I can pump the hot air and any fumes out of my room. This expands out to about 2 meters. And 400 grams of bat wash, which you can mix into a paste and cover one side of your kiln furniture to protect it from glaze damage. I'll go further into this in another video. I hope to look back on this video as a memento, to remind myself of the beginnings of my journey with Zygentoma, and in my hopes of sharing with you all the helpful tips that it took me some toil to unearth. Thank you for watching this unboxing with me, my little studio, and my new pal, Zygentoma. Have a nice day.